Bye. All right. Play the music, Crazy. All right, bing, bang, boom. Yes, indeed. It's time for the uh, Duracoat Finish Firearms segment of the week brought to you by our good friends at Duracoat. You can either buy the best or you can buy an inferior product. If you choose to buy an inferior product, that is totally up to you. You can do that. Uh, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Oh, uh, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Remember when I called the, uh, when we did the VZ58 thing, and I said, yeah, it's it's the Czech AK. And I, was, and I said, I said, oh, I hear that. All the purists are having a stroke right now. They're like, nom, 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 nom. and uh, somebody right in there, like, the Czechoslovakia was never part of the, of the Soviet Union. They were only a part of the Eastern Bloc Alliance against NATO. I'm like, oh, my God. See, calm down. Just, just calm down, hippies. Calm down. Take a deep breath. It's like when I refer to the Czech Republic as Czechoslovakia, and people have a stroke. I'm like, it's not my fault. You decided to change the name of the country. You, know, you, you can't just keep changing the name and expect me to keep up with it. So, sorry, we haven't changed the name of our country. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. <laughs> Mm. All right. So, uh, Jared, if you have a dad or a grandpa that has more than one gun, let's say you have a dad or a grandpa that has been collecting guns, accumulating them for their entire adult life. Yeah. Would you suggest recording those uh, in a... Uh, on a computer or nope. in a on a in a paper logbook. Well, hold on a second. Let me envision this. If I had a dad that did that, if you had a, a father or grandfather that accumulated guns their entire adult life, yeah. What I would do is, I would probably purchase a paper logbook of some sort or make one out of a notebook, and I would document multiple pieces of information. Obviously, the the type, the model of the thing. But then the most important thing to me is the story behind it, because they've spent their entire adult life doing, gathering these things. And some of them are probably handed down from their grandpa, their dad, whatever. Then it's got stories behind it. And that's what makes things valuable to people. The stories that are wrapped around the item. Yes. So it, you can actually go uh, to your favorite search engine and put in firearms logbook. And there are, there are several different types of paper. Well, I'm just going to use it in my laptop. And it's like, no, stop. Do you know why you should not do that? For uh, many reasons, actually. Yeah, many reasons. Uh, right now, I'm looking at a laptop. Ask me if this is the laptop that I was looking at 10 years ago. Yeah. The answer is no. Well, we have iCloud nowadays. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, they got the cloud, man. It's like, oh, I'm a, uh, Brownells actually has a Brownells Firearms Record Keeping oh, Book. Oh, nice. Yes, they I'll do. Go get a link to that. Uh, um, but this is more of a 4473 kind of a thing. What That's we're fine. talking that, about. That would work. What we're talking about is a record of Grandpa's guns. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, garage sale guns and how, you know, I'm sure that a lot of you guys know people or have encountered these these garage sale guns or the grandpa guns, you know. Uh, but someday you and your kids might just be curious. You might just be curious about what's the story behind grandpa's guns uh, or dad's guns or whatever. And the, the truth of the matter is, you know, some of them, some really don't have any stories. You know, some might be like, ah, whatever. I just, you know, felt the need and I bought this, you know. But then again, others, for instance, I possess uh, a shotgun. It's a, it's a, and it's not fancy. It's a Harrington and Richardson 20 gauge single shot, uh, open hammer, you know, exposed hammer gun. Oh, uh, and if you were to just see that laying up against the wall or in a closet or whatever, you'd probably be like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Well, I possess that because it belonged to my dad. 
And it was the first gun that we purchased when we moved on to our farm in Ohio. And so someday that's going to belong to my kids and then potentially my grandkids. So if you don't save those stories, if you don't preserve those stories, if they're not written down, you know, by the time it gets one or two generations down the line. Well, you like, either have a really good story if you have a good storyteller yeah. in, in there, that, but it might not be true. Well, if you have a good storyteller in there, the story, the true story could be lost. Well, but then it's your, your it would be my job as a I'm dad. not, I'm not talking about making up fairy tales, yeah. but I mean, if, if, you know, for instance, I, I am very, very fortunate to possess, um, uh, guns from both of my side, both sides of my, my parents' families. I got, I have two, uh, 22 rifles that came from my, my dad's dad. Yeah. And I have a 22 pistol that came from my mom's dad. So I have, I have handguns. I have a handgun and I have two 22 rifles from my grandparents. And someday my kids will have those and that'll be from their great grandparents and so on and so forth. And these are, that's what makes it, you know, quite frankly, I think a lot of these things, that's what makes it valuable. Mm -hmm. The value isn't so much because if you just looked at that, you're like, well, it's an old, Sears and Roebuck model 66 Marlin or whatever. Yeah, I'll list it at the yard sale. Big deal. 30 bucks. Yeah, I'll sell it for $50 at the yard sale or something. But but when you say, yeah, this this handgun belonged to your great grandfather. You know, your great and the you know the the one that uh that Grandpa McClellan had, your your uh your grandma's dad, yeah. Jared. He bought that during the uh, or right at the beginning or right as the the ri- the race riots in Detroit were kicking off in the late sixties. Oh wow! Yeah, and that's why he bought it. That's interesting. Um, yeah, race riots, Detroit. No sixties. What? That's uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> Look it up, hippies. Could you um, imagine? Yeah. Like I need a tool for personal defense. I'm gonna go get a revolver. A twenty two revolver. Yeah. Could you imagine thinking that? Well, the thing is, in in the '60s, you you would think that, right? That's yeah. what I'm saying. The yeah. advancement in technology now. There, there, there were no Glocks back then. Yeah. Um, so, as a matter of fact, the only well, they had it. If you thought about so. it, yeah, didn't back, you know those? Huh? They were they were invented in eighteen or 1965. Oh, Glocks were no, no, no. The AR-15. Oh, the AR-15. Well, they did actually have AR-15s. Yeah, they, he could have bought one. You could have bought an AR-15, and the uh, I need to. Make sure AR-15 that the public, was originally this is a public episode, marketed to civilians. I, I need to make sure that they know that that was not the true, the real year. It was, that was, it was, it was a joke. It was making fun of. No, no, I'm, I'm, let's somebody look at else a, that said that. Uh, Colt releases, let me see, Colt releases, talk to the audience. Um, I just was. Okay, then, we'll keep doing it. And then you don't stop. The thing. What the F? What are you looking for? I'm looking for fingers at work. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't get those on Amazon, sorry. Yes, the actually Colt marketed the AR fifteen uh to the American civilian market first before they sold it to the Air Force. I don't know what you're looking for. Oh, uh, just keep talking. First uh, I you ruined my train of thought. It's gone. How did I do that by looking at I was up? in the middle of talking and then you interrupted me. All right. Yeah, because you, you said, oh, no, I, I want people to, to know that I was just joking. In 1963, the U.S. military selected Colt manufacturers to make the automatic weapon for the uh, Colt's. Yeah, Colt, actually, they made the first Armalite model. Colt made his first Colt Armalite AR-15 uh, rifles <laughs> uh, in 1959. Yes. Yes, so... Either way, uh, there, there's actually a, a lot of really cool ads, black and white magazine ads that Colt came up with to uh, to sell their AR-15 to citizens. No, it's a weapon of war that's never been, and it should never be available to the average person. You know what I find interesting? It's just a, a quick uh, a quick aside that the same government that is telling us that the two two three five five six AR is too powerful for mere peasants to own and they shouldn't be allowed to have it that same actually i said that same that same government they were going to spend 4.5 billion 
to replace the 5.56 with a larger, more powerful caliber, but they changed their mind. You know what they changed it to, Jared? What's that? Six point five billion. So now they're gonna they're gonna spend six point five billion replacing the five five six because all of a sudden it's not powerful enough of a cartridge. But it's too powerful for mere peasants and civilian stone. So there you go. But yeah, your Duracoat finished firearm of the week uh, suggestion is this. Uh, if you have a dad or a grandpa or uncle or whatever, if you got somebody and they have been accumulating guns uh, for their whole entire life or their adult life, what you might want to do is get an actual physical notebook, a real physical notebook, and log in, not just what the gun is, you know, it's a 20-gauge Harrington Richardson serial number 095991117B2, but... Put, put some notes, you know. Dad bought this 1983. You know, Grandpa bought this 1983. First owned by Uncle Jim, passed down to Dad, passed down to me, or whatever. Because that's what makes them valuable. That's what makes them heirlooms. That, you know, if it's just a gun with no story behind it, I mean, it's fine. It's a tool. It's like a hammer or whatever. But... If it's the first gun that your, you know, that your dad ever bought, or if it's the first gun that, that your grandpa ever bought, or uh, if it's the dad that your grand, you know, the, the gun that your grandpa bought and gave to your dad and then gave to you, that has a story and has meaning, and your kids will probably appreciate it. So do your kids a favor and take the time to do that. 